All right, y'all. So I thought I'd do a little informative of the steps we take to complete a two-tone rail like this. So essentially, once it's all cleaned, um, blown, vacuumed, we start taping off to have the staining part um, done on the top cap and shoe, as you can see. So essentially, this color is being matched uh, to the floors. So we take this oak and get a match done as close as we can to what's going on the floor. And then once we get our color, then we apply it by brush, staining pad, wipe it off clean with no smudges, no smears. Once we have it there, then we start applying our top coats of clear. We use a 10 degree clear lacquer, as you can see here. And in between each coat, we'll do a light buff and fill for any nail holes. We fill with a water-based um, color matched putty where we find the the color we match it to as best we can um, and fill any nail holes and then give it a buff and sand in between each coat uh, we do about three to four coats of clear uh, on something like this especially when it's oak then once your stain is done and dry and completed and it's nice and smooth and all that then we start taping off the oak parts uh, so we can spray primer on the banisters and posts. So what we do guys is we use a automotive tape that won't curl underneath our solvent based primers. And you've probably seen me use it before. It's an American PG brand tape. Uh, we like to use this in tight mask around all the spindles and stuff like that. So when we spray the primer, we know this tape isn't going to curl. And when we eventually go to unmask it, it's going to be tight, crisp lines. So once we have it all taped, this is the part where we start laying down the primer. I use a Sullivan based PX primer um, and I'm using a uh, 1095 diaphragm pump with a Titan 308 fine finish tip. Uh, I really like these tips. They they work great, especially for smaller areas like this, the fine finish, and of course, the three for the smaller fan and the 08 orifice, just so I'm not pumping it on there. Um, but as you can see, we, we prime it all. It gets two coats of prime with a red and buff in between each coat. Uh, and that's, 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 that's how we do it. And that's the best way for us to accomplish what we're trying to do. Um, as you can see here, you want to make sure that you're getting those corners. That's the most important, important part when you're doing something like this, those corner pieces. Uh, a lot of guys like to spray these posts flat on whatever sides they can. And usually a lot of times they miss those corners. All right, so after we've buffed it, redded it, dap checked it, done all that, I've skipped right through to the finish coats here, as you can see. So when you're applying a finish coat like this, especially when you're using lacquer, you're, you're wanting to leave the wet stuff behind you and you want to keep, consistently keep it wet as you are moving along uh, the railing. Um, as I've said before, guys, when you're spraying wood banisters like this and you're coming in and out, sometimes you're having to pre-soak the ones that you're doing first, hit the next side. When you spray through, you have to go back. It becomes this vice versa thing, trying to keep it all wet as you go, right? As I said, always keeping that wet stuff to which is my left um, because it's like rolling a wall, guys. You know, a guy once said to me a long time ago, if you can understand the principles and the science and rolling the wall and keeping it wet, you'll understand how spraying works as well. So I've time lapsed this a bit so you guys don't have to sit through the whole uh, video. Um, but yeah, so essentially, you know, I'm just making sure it's all wet. When I have, um, when I'm using a 308 tip, I can be a little bit more generous on how much and um, I'm applying the lacquer. So a lot of you can see that I'm going pretty fast um, and groove into the music as I do it. Uh, but with lacquer, it dries a little bit faster. So I can add a few more strokes and put it on a little bit heavier knowing it's not gonna run or sag or anything like that. Uh, and when I do railings, I usually like to have one guy hold the hose for me as I dink around because, you know, having the hose follow you around going up and down a stairwell like this is such a pain in the butt so usually i mean yes he's standing there he's not doing nothing he's holding my hose for me so i'm not rubbing up against of course as he showed you that wet post here um you know if i have my machine in the right place sometimes i can get away with it doing it on my own but most of the time i like to have another man helping me guide my hose two sets of eyes is better than one and it usually 
you know, it, it's a lot less stressful. You're not sweating as much. You're not worried as much. You have help there. Um, and it helps you do a little shimmy while you're doing it, even though you know you can't dance. But, uh, but like I said, as you can see, guys, I can lay it on pretty generous knowing that, you know, the top and bottom are, are taped off, right? So sometimes you can start um, with your spray, like you can start with your trigger pull on the bottom where it's taped uh, and you don't have to worry about putting a run in it. But sometimes when you're doing, you know, white post, white banisters, white shoe, uh, white top handrail, you're going to get runs the most in the areas where you're starting and stopping, as I suggested in some of those other videos that you might have seen. So you want to try and start and stop off the product um, and just being careful where you're, where you're letting go of the trigger, you know, especially with the lacquer. Uh, if you hit it real quick, real hard in one spot, it's super thin, so it is going to run, guys. Um, but I'm just about done this little section here. And I say goodbye to my cameraman because I'm going to be working my way downstairs and I'm going to need him to stop filming and hold my hose for me. <laughs> so here we go. This is the best part of the job, in my opinion. This is like Christmas morning for a painter. Um, as you can see, crisp clean lines it's so satisfying to be able to pretty much you're pretty much going back and seeing how you did right away and then getting to see the contrast and the crispness and all that beautiful work that you've put in and the joy that you get unmasking it to see that finished product so here you go guys here's one of the pieces of the top handrail you know with the oak grains sometimes those tape lines aren't going to be 100 percent perfect because sometimes the tape falls into the grain and it's really hard to get a tight crisp line like that somehow so there might be a little bit of what looks like bleeding but it really is the the tape line couldn't be 100 percent crisp because of the grains in the oak sometimes uh but this is this is absolutely our favorite part guys and of course for those who uh, who've done a ton of masking and a ton of prepping in their life maybe you started on a crew where uh that's all you did and they taught you how to tape and mask so it was fast for you um because they're gonna come and spray behind you you know if it's that system where hurry up tape it the guy's coming um but it's also you need to tape in a way where if you're going to be the one to unmask it, you want this to come off quick, clean, effective, um, especially when guys are tape using paper on a tape machine. You know, if you say you're taping a square window, I don't like to tack every single piece of paper down. You want to tack them together. So when you pull them up, you're pulling it all in one. As you can see um, how Matt's done that here, the way he taped this when he was laying the tape down, he knew that when he went to pull it off, that it would come off a majority in one piece you know um, work smarter not harder that's what we like to say because to the average person you know that looks like a lot of taping and it looks like a lot of unmasking but if you do it properly and you do it and you do it right you can save yourself a ton of a ton of time in the long run um, as i've mentioned before even in the podcast guys you know we like to uh save time in the long run by putting in a little bit a little bit extra in the beginning uh because that's just easier for us as you can see not a lot of touch-ups on this rail it comes out nice clean crisp the contrast is beautiful this is such a gorgeous rail um and, it, and it's really exciting to be able to do projects like this as you can see i did i left the paper on the floor there because when we go to drop the poly on this rail when we're painting walls and ceilings the poly might not completely cover that so we're going to keep the floor protect a little bit by uh leaving that that paper there but rule of thumb especially for us guys is to make sure you take your tapes off as soon as you can because if you don't take your tapes off as soon as you can and they sit for a few weeks then there's a possibility that it's going to be really hard to remove the tape if you let it sit for too long so essentially guys we want to clean this up get our tapes off as soon as we can so we can poly this protect it um, and keep it safe from maybe say any other trades that might be coming through uh, because it takes quite a bit of work to accomplish a railing like this um, and you don't want it destroyed but thanks so much guys for joining in to this video and stay